Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second video. This is going to take us into the second half of uh, August. I think going to go to the 18th of August uh, with this update today. Uh, we'll also have a look at Beijing Climate Centre though, and that's covering the next 40 days. So that takes us into September. Quite an interesting phase that we're in at the moment. We have had a very hot summer, of course. The temperature is cooling down a little bit. Uh, now and it looks as though certainly the next week to 10 days the temperature is not going to be overly hot there will be some warmer days in the southeast but nothing particularly excessive showing up in the next week to 10 days i'll talk you for everything that's going on uh in a moment and then we'll extend out beyond that to uh the next uh, 40 days with the beige climate center but just to say about the patreon page so if you would like to become a patron for gas webbits and give an ongoing monthly uh donation to us then you can do it via the gas of his patreon uh page this is it i've got the link to this in the description box at youtube and we link to this page and all the pages at uh, Gaz Rubbids. So just come here, uh, sign up for a Patreon account, and uh, you can then pledge an ongoing monthly donations to help pay for the uh, videos and the website, keep all of the content completely free of charge. Alternatively, you can uh, make a donation through our PayPal page. This is the Gazworthids uh, PayPal page. So again, we link to this uh, app videos uh, to YouTube and on all pages at Gazwavids. So if you've got a PayPal account, very simply, you just uh, can give a one-off donation to Gazwavids uh, via your PayPal account and via this page, the uh, Gazwavids PayPal page. And it's all helping to pay for the website. We are primarily ads funded uh, and uh, we will be remaining so as well. We won't go behind paywalls or anything like that. Um, but we just ask that if you can afford to give us a donation, either through Patreon or through PayPal, uh, but please do that and then it helps us to pay for the website and keep all of the content completely free as you want it. We have got 26 uh, patrons and we've had many donors uh, for Gazo. It's a big thank you to all of our patrons and donors uh, and if you would like to join uh, those uh, very kind patrons and donors, uh, then uh, that's how you can do it via our Patreon and uh, PayPal page. And a big thank you to everyone for doing that. Right, I've got a couple of pictures to share with you. So uh, this was uh, yesterday afternoon uh, or evening uh, thunderstorm in Maidstone in Kent. This has been sent to us by Liam Kenwood. Uh, so uh, a really good uh, picture there of fork uh, lightning. Also another picture there, uh, the lightning, uh, fork lightning uh, taking place at uh, Maidstone uh, yesterday afternoon. And then I think that must have been a little bit later on because uh, it's clearly going darker there in the sky. But again, a really dramatic uh, flash of uh, fork lightning this time. Uh, and uh, again, that one sent through from uh, Liam in uh, Maidstone. So a, a big thank you to Liam for sending those uh, pictures through. If you've got any lightning pictures that you've managed to take uh, through this summer, hasn't been all that many storms around this summer. I have to say it's been a very disappointing summer for most of us so far in terms of thunderstorms. If you have got any lightning pictures, then we're always happy to share those in the videos when we get the, uh, when we get the time and the chance to uh, do it so you can email to them at gavsworthids at gmail.com or uh, share them with us on our social media pages and if we have time we will feature them in the videos and a big thank you to Liam and to everyone for doing that so I'll have a look at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for BISTA. We're looking at uh, BISTA today. Someone's asked us to take a look at uh, the ensemble for BISTA. So we're starting off a bit cooler than average. That has gone a lot cooler compared to what it was just a few hours ago. Certainly feels a lot fresher out there, a lot more comfortable. And we're going to be staying pretty cool over the next few days as well. Well, so going up to around the 11th of August, generally those temperatures are staying on uh, the cool or lowly side, you would have to say. Now, over weekend, we do see a little bit of an uptick in the temperature. Uh, that's primarily being caused by an area of low pressure that's heading in off the Atlantic, has some quite warm air 
associated with it. Uh, in the very far southeast, it could get quite, uh, just very briefly, quite hot. In extreme southeast temperatures, Sunday afternoon could pop up to the upper 20s uh, Celsius, maybe at the outside 30 degrees. But it will depend on how quickly your cold front heads across the country. Overall, though, temperatures are just rather warmish and humid, I think down in the south over weekend and probably quite cool and autumnal up in the north. As we go through into the middle part of August and then on to the second half of the month, we see the ensembles are coming out close to average, uh, really not a big deviation. It looks like we've lost a lot of those hot outliers that we were seeing a few days ago. Yes, we do have a few, uh, still a few very uh, warm members going to around 15 Celsius at 850 HPA, but they are in a very much of a minority now. Most of the ensemble members are quite close to the 30-year temperature average. So I think we are looking at warmish conditions, yes, as we go into the second half of August, but uh, probably nothing all that excessive showing up on the uh, temperature ensemble uh, at the moment. Temperature anomalies are looking like that then, and they're coming out close to average from the 8th to the 16th of August. You'd probably say Scotland is a little bit cooler than average, but it's not a big deviation either way. I think most parts of the country are close to average with their temperature anomalies uh, in the week. Yeah, precipitation anomalies are probably going a little bit on the wetter side, particularly so for northern and western parts of the country, uh, where it is a bit wetter than average there. Much of central, southern, southeastern Britain is coming out with average uh, precipitation. Again, not a big deviation either way, but it certainly does look, compared to what we've had this summer, which has been a very hot, a very dry summer, it certainly does look in the next week anyway, up to the middle of August, as though we are going into a cooler period and also a rather more changeable uh, period as well. So let's have a look at the GFS for Saturday. And remember, this is covered by the five-day forecast. On Saturday, we've got low pressure out in the uh, Atlantic. We've got this ridge uh, across northern parts of France. So that ridge is bringing up some quite warm air into the south. But it's this area of low pressure, actually, that's moving in from off the Atlantic that will bring quite a lot of wet weather on Saturday to northern and western parts of the country. That Sunday, and the low pressure is still generally centred just a little bit to our west, and so that's still pulling up the air from a southerly direction. It could be quite hot uh, in the extreme southeast of the corner. We are talking about the far east of East Anglia down to the southeast of England, where temperatures could get to be upper 20 Celsius on. Uh, Sunday afternoon. But overall, actually, we've got a cold front pushing across the country that would be taking a band of rain erratically south and east and introducing uh, cooler air from off the Atlantic. That's our Monday lots with low pressure over top of the country. We expect showers or long spells of rain. And then by Tuesday, that low pressure is moving away to the east, pulling down quite a cool and showery uh, northerly wind at that point. That's Wednesday next week, so a week away, we find high pressure is ridging into the south, but we've got this deepening area of low pressure out to the northwest of Scotland. So that's bringing more wet and this time quite windy weather into northern and western parts of the country and that's how we go up to the end of next week looking rather unsettled you have to say low pressure to the north of scotland so there'd be some sort of weather front swinging southwards and eastwards across the country yes it could be relatively warm and humid in the south and southeast but overall it does look like uh, a rather changeable week to say the least on this particular GFS run. We're up to day 10 now, and it is still looking rather uh, showery, and if anything, a little bit on the cool side, especially for northern parts of the country. Into more extended rain, so uh, we find high pressure gradually coming back into play, slowly starting to move in from off the Atlantic, settling things down as we go through towards the final week of August. That takes us as far as we can go to Friday 24th of August. We will just be knocking on the door of the uh, late summer, the late August bank holiday weekend by that point, uh, of course. So um, bank holiday updates are going to start at Gasworth Mids over the weekend. That's when we will find this uh, final bank holiday weekend of summer 2018 coming within the time frame of the GFS model. So Saturday, Sunday, expect to see the first update for the late summer bank holiday weekend.
That's how the ECMWF is looking. So, again, we've got this low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic on Saturday. A little bit of a ridge ahead of it for southern parts uh, of the country. We get through into uh, Sunday. Low pressure hasn't made all that much progress. So, it's northern and western parts of the country get the wet weather from Saturday to Sunday. The southeast is uh, mostly dry. And again, in the extreme southeast, we are probably putting up some quite uh, warm air, maybe even hot air from off the continent. Just just very briefly, but by Monday, of course, that's pushed out of the way as his low pressure heads in from off the Atlantic. That takes into a rather cool and showery first half to uh, next week. Then in the second half of next week, we set up a bit of an all-south split. So remember, the GFS does have this low pressure as well, but the ECM has it uh, a little bit more to the northwest of the country with this ridge building across France and uh, the Low Countries. It means that the wet weather, and probably quite cool weather as well, is in the north and west. And down in the south and southeast, there will be a reasonable amount of fairly dry and warm weather there as we go through the middle of next week. Uh, into the second half of next week, it all gets rather interested if this trough sinks outwards within quite warm air. That could bring heavy rain, possibly thunder, uh, across England and Wales in the second half of next week. And then that low pressure moves over to the eastern side of the country. Quite warm to locally hot upper air temperatures just to our east. That does potentially look a little bit thundery for the second half of next week. But the GFS doesn't really show that. So we have got quite a bit of model disagreement, I think, within the 8 to 10 day uh, time frame. Uh, and then finally, of course, we've got the GEM, and that one is showing again low pressure heading in from off the Atlantic over the weekend. So most of the rain will be in the north and west, the south, southeast, reasonably dry and warm over the weekend. That low pressure is still hanging around into the start of next week. We'll be bringing showers, possibly even some longer spells of rain, into the middle part of next week. Uh, again, different scenario. So there's a lot of options on the table in this uh, sort of eight to ten day time frame. The GM is building up a ridge from uh, the southwest, much more than the other two models are shown, but it doesn't last very long at all, and very quickly we're back into a showery westerly flow uh, once again. So there is disagreement from around the middle of next week onwards to the next, to the following weekend, which is like the 18th, 19th of August. There's a bit of disagreement between the models about what's happening uh, there. But again, nothing excessively hot showing up at the moment. I think that is the main storyline with the weather in the, uh, next, uh, in the next week to 10 days. But we are looking at cooler conditions and more changeable conditions compared to what we've had this summer. That doesn't mean we're going to have a very cool and wet period. It just means that compared to the summer of 2018 so far, we're going to a slightly more typical sort of UK summer pattern, which is going to have some nice days in it, going to have some nice weather, especially in the south and the southeast. But the real, the real extreme heat looks like it's gone for the time being. We can't say that it won't come back. We won't be out of uh, the woods in terms of bringing back extreme heat until we get into September. But uh, at the moment, there's no sign of extreme heat such as we've had through the rest of this summer. Right, just have a look at Beijing Climate Centre for the uh, next 40 days. So these are 500 millibar heights broken down into 10-day periods. The first 10-day period will take us from the 6th through to the 15th of August. We have above-average heights just a little bit centred to the south of the country with below average heights up to the north. And the flow of the jet is uh, going through something a little bit like that. So still a lot of settled weather around in the next week, 10 days. Just got a little bit more influence from the jet stream. The jet stream just dipping down a bit more compared to what it has been doing through this summer. So a little bit more influence from the jet. Uh, and just a little bit more changeable, but still a reasonable amount of decent weather, particularly for the south and for the southeast. And then actually in the next 10-day period, and this is taking us up to the bank holiday weekend, of course, this is the 16th to the 25th of August, we get this area of above average heights building back again. So that could possibly take us back into a very warm spell of weather in the uh, in that next 10-day period, the 16th to the 25th of August. That could see... I wouldn't necessarily say the heat wave returning, but it could certainly take us back into a spell of very warm and dry conditions with the jet stream going back north again. 
Uh, and they go through into the next 10-day period. It's taking us from the end of August to the start of September. So we go from the 26th of August to the 4th of September. And we start to weaken off the above-average heights, maybe into slip more to the south with below-average heights. That's low pressure developing to the north. The jet stream is coming southwards as well. So that looks a bit transitional. It looks as though as we get through to the start of September, we possibly start to go into a cooler and more unsettled interlude. And then that takes us through to the next 10-day period. So this is the 5th through to the 14th of September with below average heights to the north of the country and also over here to the northeast as well. The above average heights have pulled out into the centre of the Atlantic and the jet stream is really coming south there across the country. So that's turning a good deal uh, cooler and also it will be turning quite a lot more unsettled as well, particularly, but not exclusively, for northern parts of the country. So maybe hints of an unsettled first half to September there after this long, hot summer. That's a really long way off, and I think uh, we have to be more worried about that in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, at the moment, the models are in disagreement as far as next week's weather is concerned, the shorter range uh, models. So um, all of that stuff for September really is uh, very, very uh, uncertain indeed. What we can say is that in the next week's 10 days, although the detail is differing from model to model, there isn't really much sign of a return to excessive hot weather, but we will have warm weather at times, particularly in the southeast. We will get some days where we pull up a very warm air mass from of the continent, but not lasting more than a day or so before it's pushed away uh, by those Atlantic winds again. So we're reverting back to a more a more typical UK summer pattern, which as I say will have some nice weather, some nice days in it, but will also be a little bit more changeable and rather cooler compared to uh, what we've had through most of this summer so far. So all in all, not too bad an outlook, especially for the south southeast, but there will be some wet weather at times in the north and the west and temperatures closer to uh, where they should be really in a UK summer. Right, don't forget to check out 5D Forecast if you haven't yet done so. But uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.